Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Champagne S3 here once again guys, and we have finally got the last part of our wheel mods for the year. So this just came in the mail, so I'm going to show you everything we got going on with the wheel modifications. And they're pretty much going to be in three phases. I'm going to make this video and install each piece. Check in the description down below guys, I'll have timestamps separating the different installs for each of them. If you guys want to hop over and see those specifically so i think first we're going to start with the airbag cover second will be the the start and drive select button and last will be the steering wheel wrap now that's going to take a while so i'm not really looking forward to that but anyhow let me show you guys what we got all right guys so first we got our smooth leather black emblem red stitching airbag cover that we're going to replace with the stock one next up we got Something that I'm really excited for are the drive select and start button for the steering wheel. This is going to make a big difference to make the steering wheel look a little bit more special, a little bit more sporty. And then last but not least guys, we do have the steering wheel cover. I do have a badge here that came with it. Um, I might reach out to them ask if they have a just an S badge. Now the one I chose to go with guys is a perforated leather on the top and bottom and more of a like a suede-ish material on the left and right hand sides. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to release the airbag cover just right here where the um, steering wheel backing meets the console there, I guess. Um, if you turn it, there's gonna be a hole in the back. So first things first, guys, you're gonna have to make sure that we pull out the steering wheel all the way that we can just because we need enough clearance for the screwdriver. We're gonna turn on the car and guys, the way you release this bag and which way you release the clips first, it does actually matter. So we're gonna to have to turn the steering wheel clockwise first. We're just gonna start the engine here. So right now I'm lined up with the hole I can show you guys. All right, so there's a hole right there in the back that we're gonna stick our screwdriver in and um, push upwards to release the clip. Pop the hood and then we're gonna disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. So we got the positive and the negative side. We're gonna loosen the negative side, it's 10 millimeter, and then we're gonna pull that off and just make sure that we cover it so the negative terminal doesn't accidentally come into contact with the battery. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, going the, uh, the 130 degrees clockwise. And we're gonna access the back here with, I'm just using Phillips head screwdriver. Put it in the hole, pull up on the screwdriver while pulling on the airbag cover. There you go. Oh, I actually surprised I got that easily. So you hear that click and you can see the airbag is separated. So now that we did this, we're gonna turn it counterclockwise and get the other side. Okay, so I released both clips, it's still not coming out. Let's try that again. There you go. All right, so the only things holding this to the airbag or it's a little clip over here up there and a yellow one over here so what we're gonna do we're gonna pop this tab over here to release the clip pull it out and this one over here I'm just gonna have to unplug that so I think I'm gonna get a, a pick over here to take that off and then we'll take this clip off as well also guys a great tip in case you're afraid you might forget, always take pictures before every step so that when you have to revisit the step, you can ensure that you are putting things back the way they were. See where the silver piece is? Just go from underneath there and pry up. You just kind of want to loosen it a little bit. Just like that, perfect. All right, now the airbag cover is off. I'm gonna show you guys how we can transfer the airbag 
to the new cover. All right, so we got the two airbag covers here. Keep in mind the orientation of the stock airbag cover. Obviously, airbag is right over here, so you know this is the top. So when you flip this over, you can see that the where the yellow plug rests naturally, that is the top. Obviously, guys, I just want to stress, take pictures before you go to the next step in case you're ever curious on the proper way to put this back. So obviously this yellow wire you know, follows a certain path in order to fit properly. So we got four bolts here. One, two, three, and four. Are they eight? Yes, they are eight millimeter. So just go ahead and remove all four bolts and then we will be back in a second. Four bolts are removed, as you can see. Now, that is all that's holding this airbag to the cover. So there you go, it's coming out slightly. Let's work it around a little bit. There you go. So it just unseated. And obviously guys, what I can't stress enough, make sure you keep the orientation of the top. You keep note of it at all times. So we're gonna pull this out with the top like this. And we're gonna keep this like this. Guys, this is the cover with the airbag inside. If you're ever confused what is the top of the cover and the airbag, there are actually notches that kind of correlate to how you're supposed to fit this on. Now, as you can see, there's these are just kind of clips that um, you can kind of push back actually, as you can see. So, you know, free a little bit, free them up a little bit, you know, make it a little bit easier for yourself. We're just gonna rock this thing back and forth. You can use the bolts to help rock it back and forth, but try to go in like a circular pattern and work the airbag out slightly. Obviously you don't want the bag to separate too much from its original shape, so just always reach down to the bottom and pull up whenever you can. And there you go. Airbag is out of the cover. Now we're gonna bring our new cover on. So obviously guys, um, mine doesn't have the airbag sign or the horns. So I'm just gonna treat this bottom stitching as the bottom. So obviously this being the top, we have to just flip this over and insert the airbag into the new cover. So more or less, it's gonna be the same of how we took it out. We're just gonna spread the tabs and push it in, take your time. Sorry, don't be too concerned guys if they don't line up right away. Once it's inside, you can actually twist it around to get a better fit. So make sure you open those tabs, push them all in. You wanna make sure they fit perfectly. So as you can see, my tabs don't line up. So I'm simply gonna hold it while I twist, holding the bolts. And there we go guys, they line up perfectly. But before we move on to the next step, make sure that it is fully seated. As you can see, these metal pegs fit in certain grooves with the airbag cover. So make sure that they are all seated properly and you fold them all inwards nice and tight to make sure that they are fully seated and we can move on to the next step, which will be our steering wheel buttons. So what essentially we need to do, there's like a, a bracket guide that we're supposed to attach to the trim here on both sides for the buttons. This is how it looks like. This is, sorry, this is the button with obviously the, looks like um, a clip to clip this in properly and uh, points for the screws and they're basically going like so. So what we have to do here, we got to actually release the trim here on the bottom to at least pull it out somewhat so I can drill those holes. I don't want to remove the whole trim. I'm going to try to avoid that. But uh, let's try to just pull it out enough so we can just drill those holes and uh, we can leave the rest of the trim intact. The trim is, attached, is held in place by, this is all like rubber. So the plastic clips are held in by the rubber. So I'm just using a trim piece tool. So essentially I'm just gonna push the rubber underneath the black 
clip. I'm going to do that for the bottom, perhaps the sides as well. And then I'm going to use this trim piece tool to kind of go in here and uh, pop the bottom out. Okay, perfect. Uh, perfect, that's all we need. Maybe I'll pop this out a little bit. There. I think that's all the clearance I'm going to need to get a drill in here and drill those two holes. So I didn't show what came in the kit. So we got our hardware here, which are two brackets and a few screws, the wireless adapter for the start button, drive select, as well as our start button. And of course we have our wiring harness here. So it looks like we're going to actually have to remove the whole trim because we need to get to the wiring on the buttons on both sides. So literally from the bottom, I just started pulling. I freed the top off with the same method I did the bottom and I'm just pulling away. And you can use your trim tool to get in here. Free up the clips a little bit. There you go. Next up, these buttons, these should just pop right out. Yep, you just pull right out. Keep in mind guys, they follow a certain tract of the wiring. So make sure you take some photos before you go ahead and do some adjustments. So as you can see, there's like two prongs here, like kind of mushroom prongs that need to be pushed back in. We're going to bring this to the bench and see how we can drill the holes and, um, We'll be back for the wiring. All right, guys, so we're here on the workbench and we have the trim with us. Grab your buttons, guys, from the wiring harness uh, package. Grab the two black wires. So there's one split one with a connector, just another one right here. Okay, so we're gonna need those two. And also, if you open the hardware package, you're going to see the two little um, guides for the drilling your holes. They're actually labeled right and left, as you can see here. So obviously, left goes on the left and right on the right. You got to actually, it's a little groove here and here for where the buttons are supposed to go. You just put in that slot and ensure that it is all the way back as much as possible. And then you go ahead and just drill those holes. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, the guides are not perfect. You're going to have to kind of enlarge the, the holes as you kind of test fit mint. Um, obviously, the first two holes I did, they did not match and I had to enlarge the hole slightly. Now, the way this button connects to this is obviously through those two holes. And the bracket over there, you just tighten the screws, both of them meet up with these two points and there's two little uh, clips that grab onto the back of this piece right here so I'll just quickly show you how it looks like you see these two clips kind of just kind of rest on there so that's how you know these are properly aligned and um, when you do drill the holes unfortunately there's going to be a bit of a gap um, as you can see one thing I do want to mention, guys, once you have this clipped in and screwed in, there is really nowhere to put the wires. I know probably some people, if you'd like, you can probably hack into this and cut a little bit of window to get the wire through. But there's actually enough space in the back here to get the wire to run behind here. So no need to cut that. Let me just show you an example of this, how the wiring is going to work. So there's only really one way to do this, guys. The pins on the clips it's pretty self-explanatory so the larger one goes into the drive select the smaller wire with the two connectors are end-to-end -end connections between both buttons and over here that's it both buttons are connected i believe this one is an interceptor plug that connects to the black one inside the inside the steering wheel and I believe this one will plug into one of the existing um, control buttons which I'll show you. Alright so this is what the trim looks like with the buttons attached. Just to take a look at the back here I have the wires spilling out through the back on both sides. 
So let's get in the car and then let's put this together. We are about to put this trim back over here. We have this one wire with a, like a four prong plug that does not plug anywhere. Upon popping out these buttons, I couldn't find any other four prong kind of connector aside from this one back here, which is if I unplug it. So if I disconnect that four prong, you can see it is directly connected to that black connector. So because we're plugging this in either way, um, and this other side will plug in back over there. I think this is kind of the substitute for that plug. So I'm not 100% sure if this is the correct way. The instructions are pretty crap. But um, I'm pretty confident this is the way. So I'm going to plug this in. Okay, so that's in. And we're going to put this button back. And so that button is in. going to free this out once again no longer in use so we're going to put that to the side and this is the plug that's kind of taken its place and the other plug that plugs into this is actually on the steering wheel cover now that we've taken off that original plug i'm just using the same track to tuck in the wiring and then tucking the rest of the slack underneath the button so remember guys the trim they got these little pegs that you got to align and then you got the smaller uh trim clips like this and this that have to go in between the rubber there's certain grooves allocated for them so i'm focusing on getting the big clips in and just kind of kind of manipulating it pushing it here and there compressing certain sections and then pushing the big clips in. those are the main things you guys want to get in and more or less things start to kind of fall into place a little bit better when you guys are doing this just make sure that uh, none of the wires are being pinched between the clips and whatnot so keep an eye for this guys take your time uh, i think this part is going to be a little bit tedious but uh, once you get all the clips in they should align perfectly and then these side pieces for the trim you can just kind of snap into place Alright, so this is what it looks like with the trim back on. The buttons are solid on. No, doesn't feel flimsy at all. Next step, we're going to put back the airbag cover. So obviously, like we said before, the where the yellow connector is, that's the top. Just make sure that where the you see the little small, small uh, square hole here, you match it up with the silver pin. Connect that in. We're going to put the black plug back in its holder so i plugged everything back in the main thing you guys want to be sure of is make sure the wires are all tucked in nothing around the ring if you need to move the wires anywhere they got to be near the middle okay because you don't want it if you never need to take this back out you don't want it to get caught in the the ring clamp make sure you align this up okay and when we're good to go we just push in okay all the clicks you heard all the clicks you know test it out seems like there you go now it's clicked in so that's just the way it looks now guys that looks pretty sick i'm pretty impressed i am satisfied with that now the last step here is to obviously get the wiring done we just get a pry tool to pop both sides off you just get it underneath the lip here i already popped this side now i'm popping this side over here there you go this is up okay so how we take the shift knob off before we can pull the rest of this off if you pull from the back upwards you can sort of get it free and then you get um an edge that kind of lifts up a little bit and then at this point i'm just going to Use the pry tool that there you go flip this up so then you just twist it all right so we got the shift knob taken out so after you get to this point it's locked like this the pegs are here you just have to turn it counterclockwise so that these are no longer aligned then after that and you pull straight up 
Warning. Um, I had to use a, a little bit more force than I was expecting, but obviously don't be, you know, afraid to use a bit more force if it's being stubborn. It should just lift right out. Okay. So we got one disconnected, uh, which is kind of near this section here. It's just a push tab pull out, which looks like it's the for the rings up top, the illuminated rings. Perfect. We can take a closer look at what we got going on here. To remove this, we only had to remove this main plug here, which controls, I would suppose, gives power to the whole MMI controls here. And uh, this one right here, which was for, I believe, the lighted rings. Here's that main plug we removed, and then the smaller uh, ring light right here. Directly under the push start button is this plug here which I'm sure we have to tap into. So just pull it off. So tab in, and then you can pull that right off. You have to remove a few pins off of this. So to get this cover off, it is just, you just put in like a, your pick and on the bottom and you pull right off just like that. It looks like it's just a cover guys. So we're gonna keep that somewhere safe. And it looks like we have to take out a few pins here. What I'm gonna do to remove pins three and six is basically I'm going to use my pick to kind of push in the clip. And then I'm gonna use my pliers to grab the individual wire and pull out on that side so we're going to push and pull and that's how we're going to remove wires was it wires three and six there you go so that pin is out so that was number six so here we got our wiring harness and um pretty self-explanatory the board just goes to the plug that it has the correct number of pins so either way once we take out pins three and six on the OEM plug, we are instructed to put the new pins in. So a quick update. So the ones, the two wires we took from the original ignition harness, I put it into this connector here that came with the wiring kit. So now it makes a full loop with the OEM connectors and the new connectors going into the ignition. So I ran the red wire here. This is actually the USB wire, which you can get under here. It's right it's right on the bottom of these ones. It's just literally a push clip. You push the side, you pull it out. Now, on this wiring harness, the red is actually the power for it. So I just used a connector um, and tapped into the red power. Now, originally from the aftermarket harness, the red actually comes with a fuse that you connect to your fuse box but however like I mentioned earlier I have a lot of things connected in the fuse box and I'm kind of running out of um, spots and I'm not sure which one to go with next so I just thought I would just tap into this USB power we're gonna plug it in Now everything else is connected the only thing that we have not connected from the aftermarket harness is this like purplish blue wire I'm not exactly sure what this is for at the moment. I don't think I need to use it. Also, before I forget, I connected the black ground wire. I just put another 10 millimeter nut on top and sandwiched them and that should be good for a ground. For now, we're gonna connect a few of the, few of the things here. We're gonna obviously leave this open, but I'm gonna connect the battery and let's see if this thing, we can get power to this thing right here. Moment of truth. Oh shit. Please let this work. Oh yeah. Okay boys, we got it working. All right guys, so obviously this works. This is sick. Um, as you can see, they are illuminated, which is pretty awesome. I wasn't expecting that. And just testing the drive select we can press it and you can see on the screen over there and you can see the screen here it's changing right 
So everything works as intended. Um, this thing won't start. And obviously, if, unless you hold the brake. So functionality to start the car is still the same. As you can see, when I press this button, it actually, the receiver, you can see it communicating with the, the light turning blue. So everything works as intended, guys. I'm so happy, guys. I uh, haven't seen too many videos with like aftermarket buttons like this um, as a kit. So I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this so far and you guys consider doing this. We just plugged in all the plugs underneath and we just clipped in the trim now we're just going to put the shift knob back in okay so once you put that back in you turn the tab to lock it again and then we can just pull this down and clip it black into place so the next step was to actually install this wheel wrap Unfortunately, we are not able to do that in this video because they actually set me the wrong one. As you can see, there are no holes here for the paddle shifters. Okay guys, that's it for the installation for the airbag cover and the TTRS style buttons. I'm super happy the way they turned out guys. They look amazing. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. I haven't seen anyone with content on how to install these buttons aside from a full wheel. So guys, if you decide to buy that separate kit and this helps you out, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. It helped me out a lot. And guys, until next time, happy modding, and we will catch you on the next one.